All right. Well, Akawar, thank you so much for helping with my project. Could you say a little bit about yourself? Uh, Nathan, I am Khawar Ali Sher, and uh, I have a passion for astronomy. And here in Pakistan, growing up, there wasn't really, you know, uh, any place where, you know, I could pursue this passion. The blame or the culprit in my case was one book that I read, I was right, like, uh, I think in fifth or sixth grade at that time, around about 10 or 11 years old. And that book was about the constellations in the night sky. That is the one book that was the culprit that put me on this path. Growing up, now I'm 33 years old. I'm a professional, I have a day job, I'm a marketing manager for a project here in Islamabad, in Pakistan. That passion, that curiosity, you know, just grew within me. And eventually I became the journal secretary for the only astronomy club here in Islamabad, Pakistan. And it has, you know, uh, grown to the point now that I have held over 50 events. And now I myself am the owner of telescopes. So <laughs> something that started from one book about, uh, you know, a sky map or constellations has resulted in me giving at least like thousands of children the chance to actually look at the moon in detail using a proper astronomical telescope. So that's I, me. That's my passion. That's an amazing story. Uh, do you remember um, how you came across that book? Oh, yes, very vividly, because uh, that was actually a present given to me by my elder brother. He just, you know, out of somewhere, he just you know, kind of looked at the book and he thought that, all right, I'll give this to my younger younger brother. To my kid brother and that's it <laughs> i but your brother you're saying doesn't have a passion for astronomy like you do i uh, mean he has a he has his different you know he has his own life obviously but his passions are quite pretty different he's into debating he's into sports but i am into more into you know uh, astronomy and stuff like this sciences although and... one one thing i'd like to tell you nathan is that i am not qualified or I don't have any formal education in astronomy at all. I am like, a, I have a master's in business administration. My day job has absolutely nothing to do with astronomy. It is just my passion, it's just my hobby. I think in some respects, um, people who don't have a professional training in something and who are passionate about it and are passionate to try to find the truth and the, the actual, um, you know, who are observing it uh, from a fresh set of eyes is, is critical, is important. Mm, yes, you're true. You're, you're very right. True. Isn't it amazing how such random things like a, a book from a brother uh, can uh, uh, promote such such things? And like you said, who how, we don't know the story about how, how he came across the book and decided to give it to you. I have no idea. I never asked. <laughs> And in fact, I pondered upon this question when you, you know, once I started interacting with you, and I was like, hmm, where, where did it start from? And I followed that, you know, train of thought in my head. And I realized that that is the first time I find myself, you know, in, in all of my memories, I went right back. And I was like, hmm, now I'm standing in my street where I grew up. All right. So that is, you know, that I have that book in my hand. I'm trying to find all of those stars that are shown in that book. So that is the first memory that I have of myself looking towards uh, the stars. It's going to be uh, so rewarding, um, you know, 10, 20, 30 years from now, uh, these kids uh, who have attended your events, who come back later on and say, you know, I would not have been interested in this if, if it went for you. And they've gone off and done these amazing things. And, you know, uh, it's a, what should I say, a self-repeating uh, process. It's a process that, you know, just pushes itself forward. I mean, once I had this uh, experience in which I would go to a school or a university or even an orphanage, and once I would get kids to, you know, look at an object, let's say uh, the most awe-inspiring object is obviously the moon, because young minds they're very impressionable and they are they have never you know been given this perspective 
on something that is just you know in the sky there almost every day you know no second thought about it they just look at it and they're like okay in our local language we call the moon chand so they're just like chand that's it that there, there is no inquis there is no question there is no curiosity there is no no inquisition there is no different perspective to it but i have seen children's eyes lit up i mean literally they will never like once i have put this perspective in their mind that that the thing that chand is not just something in the sky that has no impact on your life once i once they realize it and they look at it in that detail look at all of those craters they look at the shadow that cast you know by the sunlight after that they will always question they will always look at the moon and will be like hmm how did it get there why are there so many craters on the moon why aren't craters like that on the surface of earth so the light or the or what should i say the bulb is then lit up then they are all questioning and then their perspective changes and that is the process i'm talking about that drives me again every time i do this you know i get all of that motivation inside me once again that growing up i you know even when i tried to find i couldn't find any telescopes in pakistan unfortunately but now pak astronomers and myself we have 10 proper astronomical telescopes and now i'm even you know uh, starting to get equipment for astrophotography that can later be used to even further this uh, small so- sort of uh, effort that i'm trying to make that's uh, awesome and i i guess you're also collecting uh, more volunteers and a bigger network and yes uh, it's it's so easy now i mean with uh, all of the technology now we have our own whatsapp group we have our own facebook group and already we have about more than 1000 members in the facebook group that's uh fantastic and, and how has covid affected you oh yes mm, not you know uh i'll put it in this perspective um i think that uh, in 2017 and 18 and 2019 in those three years uh my little group was averaging one outdoor or one proper observation session a month even two at times and that went down to zero in 2020 i mean we did not have any observation session we did not risk uh, ourselves or anybody else for that matter so almost the entire year we didn't have any observation session at all and um that being said we had the partial and the full lunar uh, solar eclipse on i think 22nd of june in pakistan and uh, you know i had to observe that and i had to do a live stream of it just from my own backyard i didn't you know set up an event i didn't do anything but contrary to that last year in uh, december i think we had 150 people in 2019 december of 2019 I think we had close to a hundred or hundred and fifty people gather in the Central Park or the you know the main park of Islamabad, and it was a very big event. But in two thousand twenty-two, due to COVID, obviously, we did not do that. Well, and any word on like the vaccine being distributed in Pakistan, and um, do you see any any hope, or is it still pretty much the same way it was a year ago? I think I. I th- I really don't think that I am qualified to uh, I mean uh, comment on that or you know give an input on that because obviously it's uh, the government would be doing its best uh, to make sure that it's available to the people of Pakistan so I don't think that I am qualified or even that much aware to make a comment on that I completely understand plus um you know we came here to talk about space so <laughs> and the future not 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 today Um so regarding NASA's plans to send people to the moon in 2024 had you heard about this Oh yes <laughs> um I was lucky enough uh, to be part of a series of talks I mean uh, at a university here in Islamabad and at an incubation center here in Islamabad as well when the 50 year anniversary back in I think 2018 or 19 
the 50 year anniversary of the moon landings was celebrated and uh, there and you know preparing for my talk and for my lecture i researching online i came across nasa's missions which is i think called the armitees mission which basically plans on sending people back to the moon and uh, one of my talks was actually entitled this that this time we are going to stay that humans this time are going to go to the moon and hopefully as far as i researched there are plans of setting up a permanent base there so if armitees is, is about not just give, getting people up there but actually having a permanent presence over there then i think that uh, it's pretty much that summed up in these words this time we are going to stay and does it i mean like the last time we had people on the moon was 1972 um yes long when can you talk about how people received your talk? What what do they think about? Were they like excited or were they like, you know, why are we doing this when we have all these other problems here on earth? Uh, what was the reaction? Actually, uh, you know, when you, whenever you say what was the reaction or, you know, when you try to gauge public opinion, uh, I would rather take not just the, you know, um, surface of it. I'd like to go a little bit deeper and look at you know the people that I'm talking about. Fortunately, the audience that I had were all you know, at least university educated graduates. So all of them were very positive and receptive to these things. And you know, uh, once uh, there, there are things that become symbols, right? One step for man, giant leap for mankind. That's that's a very powerful statement. So once again, going to people that I have interacted with, they view it in a perspective that is, you know, entirely different. They view it as something that, you know, people are back on the moon and people are there permanently. That is a, such a huge statement that, uh, you know, um, you can fight a lot of ignorance and a lot of, you know, uh, dogmatic belief with something like that. So that's how people I have seen take it. You know, they're like, all right, this can be used to inspire good in people. This can be used to get children to, you know, pursue science. This can be used to educate enlightened minds. So that's how I think people are, people usually take this. I, I think at some point in the future, um, maybe our activities on the moon become so big that you'd actually be able to see it from the earth, you know, maybe with a really high power telescope or something. Uh, it, do you think that will be a big turning point in people's realization that yes, we're, we're truly going out? Or let me share an experience that I had. Uh, once I was uh, at the school that you know, I myself studied from, and uh, I had this very you know, brief uh, sort of a talk with some kids there, all grade 10 kids, I mean 14, 15, early teens, all boys and uh, you know i was trying to explain to them that uh, you know uh, that about the moon its phases and showing some pictures of the main crater tycho and etc and what happened was one of the kids asked me that uh, you know the famous conspiracy theory that you know do you really think that people went there and i said to him and that was the first time i actually used this bit of information I told them that there are actual mirrors on the moon placed by astronauts, which are used for exactly measuring the distance between the earth and the moon. So once there's a permanent settlement and there is enough activity that it can actually be seen, I think that will be so much easier to convince <laughs> people that, you know, it's not all made up, it's something real. And, uh, you know, kids here in my country, at least, uh, I can easily, you know, uh, I have enough evidence and I have enough knowledge that I can easily convince them. Yes, but having a light actually lit up on the moon, actually being able to see it through a telescope, that will really help. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, whenever you think about the, the future of humanity, do you see humanity really branching out into the rest of the solar system and maybe the rest of the galaxy too? Or... Do you think we're, we're pretty much contained here on Earth just making these little trips uh, to places? You know, uh, 
to be you know uh, i'd like to put it like this i am a huge believer in uh, dyson spheres i mean i think that humanity will very soon find not just uh, itself doing things like that you know using up the power of its own sun but we'll actually find other civilizations that are doing something similar so if you ask me that's how i think i take it that this is just you know the starting point for us yeah it's kind of interesting statistic you know if you created a sphere around the sun that had the same diameter as earth's orbit and you mm. look at all of, you know the proportion you know the surface area of that sphere and compare it to um you know the the area of like uh the earth it's like the difference is like one seven hundredth billionth is the proportion between those two i mean we have like infinite amount of energy compared to what we we use right yes. now yes and the other day i was uh, sitting with a client and he was like you know that you don't really need to be billed for the electricity that you use i was like yes if every home just had a proper solar, solar panel installed we wouldn't need we don't we wouldn't even have the debate of nuclear energy versus clean energy versus coal and versus you know hydrocarbons we wouldn't even have that debate we we need some some type of um paint that you could use that would make <laughs> it uh you know turn a roof into a a solar panel solar panel yes exactly um so if it was safe and affordable and you could would you go to space uh affordable yes i would definitely assuming that i had enough spare funds to afford it yes definitely i would definitely go for it there is this uh worldwide reality tv show contest that's in the works called space hero that will be a global competition to identify a um citizen astronaut um to send to the international space station for 10 days uh, do you see yourself um participating in something like that uh, i think that's probably what i'm going to be googling up after i finish this interview uh sadly there's not much online yet uh but um uh, later this year there should be and i definitely i will let you know as soon as i hear more information about it but it sounds like it, it you would you would be interested in that oh yes surely well i i really appreciate your time is there anything that you wanted to talk about uh, that uh, we didn't get to well um i think that uh, i wanted to ask you a couple of questions and i was waiting for the time when you'd be saying that the interview is now over so we can you know have a conversation oh okay i uh, should i start recording then sure if you, if your questions are done uh yes or if you don't mind me recording uh, your questions and my answers i i'm happy to include that All right. too right, so tell me about your uh, i went through that i think houston uh, society something north northern houston society uh, uh, yes uh, uh, so the north houston space society is a chapter of the national space society that promotes um the idea of humanity uh branching out into the rest of the solar system and then also using all the resources in the solar system to improve uh human life uh such mm. as you know space based solar power and uh, asteroid mining and these types of things so um we get together once a month and we usually invite a guest speaker uh maybe from the industry maybe they're a retired person maybe they're a student maybe they're just somebody with an idea we've had uh guest speakers from um who had worked at NASA for decades we've had guest speakers of people who want to be astronauts um mm. we haven't actually had an astronaut yet but i i think we'll we'll have one soon we had a executive from intuitive machines they're actually mm. one of the people that are sending a robotic probe to the moon uh, later this year uh, so that's kind of neat that's kind of good and uh the the goal of it is pretty much uh, similar to what you're doing except more about the space exploration development piece uh it's to try to educate the local community here about what's going on 
and get them involved. All right, if you need, I can also share a PDF that will you know, um, uh, give you a profile for my little group there. So that will give you a good idea of our activity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see, I guess I'll make you a uh, co-host and then you should be able to share out. Is it okay for me to include this in the recording? All right, yes, definitely. definitely. Uh, excellent. It will give you a lot of images, so you know, images can then easily be shared. Let me figure out how I'm supposed to do that. Yeah, and one thing I want to ask you is if you needed any support, um, if there's anything we could do to help support you in your mission. Um, yes, but exactly what, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, wait a second here. How can I share something with you? Right. Um, it should be right towards the bottom. Uh, there should be share screen. Being able to share a file. All right, I think I'll just email you. That will be much easier. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, I think it uh, only has a share screen option. I don't think it has uh, share mm -hmm. files. Uh, so that's that's that. Oh yes, okay. please email it to me. Uh, do you have my? E I guess you have my email address. The Nathan Price. Yes, gmail.com. Yes. Okay, cool. I do have your email. It's uh, nathan.price at gmail.com, right? I got it. That's me. So, uh, your society or you know your setup, how long you have, has it been around? Uh, we just started our fourth year. Uh, so, we um, started in, I think, uh, January uh, 2018 was our first meeting. And um, this past Saturday was our uh, 37th meeting. And you have successfully held them every month. You know, that's every, every month, except for one month that first year we were out of town during our normal meeting time. But uh, since then, every every month for sure. Yeah, that is amazing because uh, that is something that we struggle <laughs> with, you know, uh, doing it every month. Although uh, the, the profile that I'll be sharing with you it was actually started way back in 2007. So I became a member of it in 2016. So there's a lot of history. That is, that is uh, good. Let's see, I'm just waiting for it to come across. All right, I'm sending you right away. Yeah, I mean, pretty much you have to have like a core group of people that are dedicated to it. And then you have um, a bigger group of people that kind of float in and out. Uh, and then you have um, a bigger group of people that come through one or two times and then you don't see them again. <laughs> uh, so that's, yeah. That happens a lot. You know, whenever I have a public event or, you know, before COVID when I would have public events, uh, what would happen is that every time it would draw a crowd, like 20, 30 new faces, but all, all of those 20, 30 new faces, only one or two, you know, would become, uh, what should I say, regulars. Rather, the rest of them would, you know, just not be seen again. Yeah, that's, uh, that's I think, expected. You know, people are just trying it out, exploring stuff, um, seeing if they have a connection. It's, it's probably for the best. They still might go off and tell somebody else about it who then there's like, oh, that is my thing. Thank you so much. So it's good. All right, I've sent it over via email. I hope you find, find it. Uh, let's see, still waiting. Yeah. Oh, there we are, just got it. Um, oh, awesome. I'll go ahead and uh, uh, let me save it real quick and we can do this and we can. Right. 
Let me uh, open it. Okay. And I can uh, share this on the screen. Yeah. And um, yeah, so this is this is awesome. We, we need to do something like this for our North Houston Space Society to kind of give people an idea on you know what we've done and what we do. Actually, Nathan, I am a graphic designer. Uh, I told you I'm a marketing manager for a project. This first picture that you see, I'm I'm at the DOB. This is actually in the project where I work. It's real real street residential project. So I organized this event for all of our core members. Uh, the founding members can be seen on the images on the right side. These are the founding members. These uh, uh, yes, on the right, the two gentlemen on the right, up and down. Yes, yeah. these two gentlemen are actually the founding members of uh, this group. Uh, you can see brief profiles if you go go along. This image of Andromeda was captured by one of our members from the UK. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. The core team members. Just uh, make it bigger. Due to some reason, it's not showing the names. It's supposed to show the names as well. I think I. Mean... <clears throat> Is it okay if I uh, join your WhatsApp group too? Yes, it's perfectly fine. No problem. So uh, <clears throat> a couple of uh, years ago, um, these events were held, all of them. This was this year, uh, the World Space Week event 2020. I was invited to deliver a talk about uh, journal generally just uh, at Air University here in Islamabad. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to see that you're able to, to still have events uh, smaller and uh, a little bit. Um... This was in fact the only event this year. We oh, this is your only event. one. Oh, okay. But it, it worked out okay. So uh, maybe it was a yeah. good, uh, um, you know, template to follow for future events. Actually, um, if you go, as you go deeper in this profile, you realize that we have actually had a lot of events. But 2020 has not been that, you know, kind or rewarding in that sense. Oh, and what's the ComSat? This is the name of university. Comsats. Oh, okay. I Whenever I saw ComSat, I kind of break it down to communication and satellites. Uh, you know, so my head was like, maybe it's like some CubeSat experiment type of uh, thing. It's the name of a university here in Islamabad. It has nothing to do with CubeSat. <laughs> Learn something all the all the time. <clears throat> I was I've actually started a small venture now. Ne? I'm trying to import and uh, sell uh, equipment telescopes in Pakistan. Over the years, we have done several outreach events in uh, major towns and cities all across the country. So. We have featured some of those. Uh, what would it take to actually make the high quality telescopes in Pakistan itself? Well, first of all, you need an optics uh, setup that can you know, make high quality optics. That will be the first challenge. Uh, otherwise, I think this is uh, something special. Back in 2008, uh, sorry, back in 2018, on the 5th of March, our group was at PTV World, the national uh, television uh, network. And uh, for an entire hour, you know, we, we, we had this uh, opportunity to work for astronomy awareness on national television. 
that is uh, fantastic. And uh, did did you end up getting some members um, from this as well? Like, yes, we we had a surge in uh, you know people who were interested in astronomy, so that was something really big for us. Our uh, local astronomy uh, club um, people pay an annual membership fee, and then. They have a number no, of. We are not organized like that. I mean, we are uh, we are a group of enthusiasts, and uh, our uh, group, I would say, or our club, isn't you know oriented like that. We don't have any membership fees. We don't charge anything for our observation sessions. We just you know do it for our love and for our passion for astronomy. Yeah, they have a lot of um, outreach events, like at elementary schools and in the park and things like that. And then, you know, anybody's free to attend the meetings. But one of the benefits of actually joining up and being a, a paid member is they have a number of telescopes that you can actually borrow for several months at a time and then use them on your, your um, uh, and you could uh, try out different telescopes and see what you like and things like that. Um, at the moment, uh, all our telescopes are privately, uh, I mean, privately owned. I own a couple of telescopes. So just like me, other group members, they privately own the telescopes. So sometime in the future, maybe this year, maybe next year, when we have enough funds, we would have telescopes, you know, that we can give out to people. Right now, we can't do that. Um, they're all privately, personally owned. Uh, what is your favorite thing to observe? My favorite thing to observe is at the moment definitely uh, the moon, and after that the Hercules cluster. If uh, if something that's you know that's visible in your skies, I think it should be your northern hemisphere as well. So the Hercules cluster these days, it's you know it's just too good. The Pleiades and the Hercules, these two clusters. I uh, do you uh, look at like Jupiter and Saturn and and things like that. Jupiter and Saturn are, you know, um, um, if you could just scroll a little bit upwards, um, scroll up to the only event I had in 2020. There, I can show you something. This one? Yes. You, you see this right here, right here. This uh, kid looking at this telescope. This uh -huh. is the telescope that I have at the moment. This is a, a Smith Cassegrain six inch uh, next star Celestron telescope. So uh, it, it has a motorized go to mount. So in the planet season, which is over now, uh, obviously Saturn and Jupiter were awe inspiring. But I find that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Saturn and Jupiter have this, you know, this basic, what should I say, expectation versus reality gap. When I I'm observing myself or when I have uh, a couple of people or a, or a group of friends, we expect to see a lot of detail in Saturn and in Jupiter because we are accustomed to all of the dazzling images that you know NASA has gathered or the Hubble Space Telescope has taken or other you know powerful telescopes have taken. But once you see it through a telescope of that size, the detail is just, you know, it, it's just not there. So <laughs> there's a huge gap between you, what you're expecting and between what you know is there versus what you are actually seeing. I mean, I would give anything to go to Hawaii to the Keck telescope and, you know, just to look at Jupiter in that detail or just look at Saturn in that detail. I'd love to do that. But uh, with a telescope, this is the best that we have at the moment. Uh, one of our members has an eight inch uh, Smith Cassegrain, and I have this six inch Smith Cassegrain. So, this is the best that we have at the moment. So, uh, once we have better equipment, once you have telescopes, you know, three meter wide or, you know, 10 foot uh, aperture telescopes, then obviously Saturn and Jupiter will be the best objects. But right now, I am mesmerized by star clusters. I am hooked on them these days. That's interesting. I had to take a look. I actually don't own a telescope. I've been wanting to buy one. Um, uh, but uh, that so I, I'd be interested in, in knowing from you talking about that. Uh, which one do you prefer the six or the eight? I know the eight's bigger and bulkier, but 
it can see more light. Um, if, you, if you go to the first page of this profile, you'll see a telescope, uh, the very first page. That is actually a 10 inch, yes, here, the one that I'm using at that time. It's, this is a 10 inch daub. In terms of light gathering power, this is the best that we have. So if you ask me my favorite telescope of all of the, the ones that we have, this is it. This is owned by the gentleman here on the, on the right, you know, uh, Saf Saab, he owns this telescope. Pictured here on the right with the telescope. Now, whenever I look yeah. at this, um, the vast majority of this um, telescope it uh, looks like it's things that it could be manufactured uh, locally and it's really the mirror and the optics that you would need uh, to, to get. The, the difficult part would be grinding a mirror, you know, a 10 inch wide mirror to that uh, precision. It's, you know, I, I'm sure you understand the physics behind it. It's a concave mirror, you know, it's supposed to be like this. Obviously not that much, but it's just you know, slightly curved. So getting that curvature just right, so that the image is formed perfectly at uh, you know the eyepiece. That's that's the science. Until yet, I haven't been able to find any you know uh, lab at least here in Islamabad. I've checked. I haven't checked nationwide, but I but I don't really think that uh, at the moment there is any facility that would be able to do that on a on this scale. You know, uh, doing it one off might be a very expensive thing i hope you you know get what i'm trying to say that uh, let's say that there is a facility that is making optics for uh, whatever use but getting them to make one especially for me with my specifications for once it might become a you know expensive proposition i understand yeah um you also mentioned about that expectation versus reality gap for jupiter people see like the Hubble images and things like that. I, I was wondering uh, what your feelings are about the James Webb telescope that's supposed to be launched later this year, if you have oh, yes. some expectations uh, there. My expectations, James Webb is, you know, it, it's, the, it's the window that uh, will take us further and deeper into space than we've ever gone before. And my expectations are very high. I mean, my expectations are, I am really, happy to be alive in these times. These are exciting times to be alive in. And uh, I think not just a James Webb, but also, you know, I, ha I came across this meme or this joke a couple of weeks ago, like people are waiting for the 14th of Feb, but people like me are waiting for the 18th of Feb. So <laughs> uh, because of the, the landing on Mars uh, of yeah. like uh, perseverance. So we'll, we'll have a helicopter flying around somewhere other than the Earth. So, <laughs> yeah, we, I, I hope it works out like that. You know, it's, it, reality always has a, a way of throwing, um, uh, making us learn new things. It has been a slow progress, but mankind has made it so far. So. The, the key thing is never give up, keep going. Never give up, never give up. keep going. Emma, this is uh, fantastic. I really appreciate you sharing this with me. And I'd love to, um, you know, get on your mailing list or um, I could join your Facebook uh, page, of course. Uh, yes, and just please, please do join the Facebook group and uh, please do like the page. This is my uh, contact detail that is visible over there. So uh, you can always just get in touch. And I'll just add this, um, this profile to my Countdown to the Moon website so people could download it if they're interested. Yes. That's okay. Definitely, definitely. Please go ahead. No issues there. Well, fantastic. I really appreciate your time and it was so good to get to meet you. And um, maybe someday we'll meet up in person. Definitely, looking forward. And okay. I'll stay in touch with you and try to be a part of every event that you post. <laughs> oh, I really appreciate that. I, I know it's quite early or quite late at night. I mean, what time is that for you? 2 uh, a.m., 2 p.m.? It's around quarter after midnight, so no problem here. Oh my gosh. I, the good thing is you're an astronomer. Bad thing is you're also a marketing person, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm used to it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll talk to you later then. Thank you, Nathan. Thank, Thank you. you Bye-bye. Have a good night.